what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with George of course, the Scarender. And yeah, before going in, I really need to tell you guys, I do have a PC issue as of right now. So I'm using a less effective PC. So as of time being, I don't know the end result of this video, but I hope still it's a good one. Anyway, today we're going up against Ethan in our actually second week NUCL match. And I have nothing prepared due to uh, the TBU matches that were going on um, during this week. I had very, very little time to actually prepare for Ethan. So, sadly, I guess you'd say, I just threw a team together. But it turned out to be pretty great anyway. My, definitely my battle guts did kick in and we had a very, very nice game. Look at the opponent's team here. We actually have a very nice draft here for being, of course, in the new. We have Cabotop, Steelix, Gold Guys, Lipod, Kecleon, and Huanta. So definitely a formidable, complete the NLU team actually. I myself picked up um, pretty much um, the same thing as I had previous week with both being a Scarf Magmar, uh, Spex, uh, Zip Strike I believe, um, Rock Polish Ride On, and um, I do believe Leftovers, um, uh, Cryogonal, and uh, Mishmatch on the items with uh, Fracture and Stoutland. So Fracture, Scarf, and Stoutland is the Violite, so uh, yeah, you guys figure that out. And also, the Stoutland should have been Intimidate, it is not. Uh, it actually is the fourth set, so not gonna work as well this time around. You know what? Who cares? It's still a great battle, and like I said, it turned out to be a very, very nice one. So, I did predict the live part lead, so that's what I'm gonna go for and start off with my uh, Magmar and basically just heard something. So, with all this, my guys, let's go! So, yeah, I didn't really pay attention to this complete team, as you guys will find out. Uh, I'm gonna do some strange plays, and I'm also gonna do some good plays. So then he's gonna start with his Phil Spectre, which of course, being the Haunter, very, very intimidating. And of course, there's really not a whole lot I can do. So um, I basically decided to break its sash by going with a Fire Blast, I believe. No, I actually went for Psychic, uh, Neutral Heavy Move on it. Basically, I didn't want to risk missing, of course, the, <laughs> the Fire Blast. So anyway, obviously, there's nothing I can do. Uh, pretty much fairing could set up rocks and stuff like that, but I know Gaius is a complete um, Wally is this guy. He could potentially pack either Dream Punch or the Mistress Mon or the Mistress move that could be uh, I'm sorry, uh, that is Ice Punch, but I was expecting him to actually switch back to his Haunter, so I decided to just go for, go for Stone Age. And pretty much like I said, they're forcing it down to the sub or sash sub. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, we do successfully do that, but at the same time, there's really not a whole lot we can do from this position, so we force to switch out yet again, actually. So, not the best situation to be at, but at the same time, there's really nothing more I can do. So, going to, of course, our Mr. Fire Goose, and taking that like a champ, and we're gonna retaliate with the Fire Blast. I did kind of think we'd try to preserve this one, but at the same time, there's no reason for him to do so. Uh, the issue here, we lock myself into Fire Blast, is that Cabotops can come in freely, and hurt me, which is something I'm not really wanted to do. Uh, so we're just gonna switch out. Like I said, there is not a whole lot we can do. And um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So I'm gonna bring Fracture here, predicting the waterfall or aqua jets. And um, of course, due to we resist that, we're actually going to be just fine here. And here's pretty much where I realized that, all right, uh, it still did a lot of damage. I was gonna check out which item this gun one got. And of course, I don't see the violence. So I was like, oh, really? Um, so now we're going to bring Typhoon, predicting him to actually switch out or go for an attack move, but either way, it's fine. Um, and uh, he's going to actually bring his Solid Snake. Now, here's a situation where I basically decided that, you know what, I can just sack Zip Striker here. If I get a good chunk of damage on the Steelix, then I should be fine throughout this match. Um, he actually goes for, and uh, you know, I can't really stress this enough, he goes for Stealth Rocks. Now, that's not a bad play. It really isn't, but also make sure that my Substrika is not down for the count. And also, look at those leftovers recovery. Those bulbs are extremely big. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna switch out actually, uh, predicting him to bring back his uh, Cabotops or anything like that. So I decided to go for fourth. Um, if he goes for an earthquake, uh, or earthquake, then that's fine. Uh, so there's Dragon Tail, and of course, I did not suspect that at all. And that actually worked out pretty nicely for him. Uh, he's gonna force in Gaius, and Gaius is, well, it's a bit on the slow side, it really is, but I do have some speed investment on it, or roughly, it is rock polish set, so I know I will have speed, so I can actually finish this off just with the earthquake, and uh, that turned out to be real nicely, um, nothing wrong about that, though I could probably just keep going for an overheat, 
but I didn't want a position where he could set up against me. It was something I really, really didn't want to see. So anyway, Kabutop is going to come in yet again, actually, and do... Not a whole lot we can do. It really isn't. So I'm going to bring Striker back again, actually going for those resisted hits. And um, at this point, you know, Striker is losing a lot of HP by switching in, and the Waterfall is not helping, and without the Violet, I'm really not long for this game. So I thought I took the opportunity here to actually pretty much go for Outrage. Like, I know he has Gorgeist or Gastrodon. No. Ooh. <laughs> what is it called? Court and Love. The um, Garbodor. Damn it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so this guy go for an Outrage. Just to do some damage on it, really. Like I said, due to resistant damage and not having any Violite, there's really nothing he can do. So I'm better off just going for as much damage as I can. And then basically just follow that up with another Mon later on. Now the thing is here, I know that he most likely got to up spikes and that's going to be fine. So I was thinking first I could bring Rhydon, but he could have Seed Bomb, he could have predicted that since he actually is prepared for my team. So it was a bit too risky, so I decided to go go with Fulf basically. Due to me not being in Team Blade set, it's not really that viable this game anyway. And I know I'm going to activate the Aftermath, I'm going to fall to that basically. I'm going to be put in a position where I'm basically it's so close to dying. But um, really now there was nothing I could do. Uh, this was definitely the best play, and I'm gonna die to self rocks anyway, so I'm basically are in that fodder position ish uh, situation. So he's gonna go to Kecleon, and of course, he's gonna go for Fake Out, so I decided, you know what? I could probably save this for a safer switch and go back to Rhydon and uh, pretty much get something out of that. Uh, he's forced pretty much to go for a Fake Out anyway, or rather, it's a safer play if he doesn't want to go for the Capitals, but of course, be no awful yet. But you no, know, Kecleon is here, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna eat that up, and uh, yeah. I mean, there is really nothing you can do. Now, he's not having a lot of speed investment because my Rhydon do outspeed. I do think the Kecleon is naturally faster, but he's probably adamant, which means that if that's the reason we should actually are faster, because we are jolly set for all weird things we are, we're definitely jolly set. But, you know, here is where it all actually ends. And it's one of those very, very rare occasions, guys. I haven't lost any Mon until this point, and I'm going to go for Earthquake. His last Pokemon is the Cabotops, but here's the thing. I don't have anything for that Kabutops now. It's, um, he won. Yeah, I mean, I feel really bad here, but honestly, there is, uh, this is where this game ends, and it's terrible. So we're just gonna speed this up, really. You know, without the Intimidate on Stoutland, there was really nothing stopping this mon. I had no Pokemon I could actually outspeed it. So like I said, the worst part is that until this point, I am 6 to 1 against him. But he played me like a fiddle, you know, he will down the necessary mons, and I'm gonna fall basically to this monster of a poke. Um, the rock polish that would not really have helped here either. Uh, now, I could have stalled out, and I could have seen, of course, that play coming, but I didn't. Um, though I'm, afterwards, of course, I feel that I should have probably stalled out his uh, um, life for a bit better and go for a rock polish, maybe even two, just to stall the rain out to actually have a lot of momentum to actually finish this up with, of course, my mod that probably was the next counter for it, which of course would be in the Cryogonal. But you know what? I'm not even mad. I think my opponent played a very nice game and he definitely won fairly. So, yeah, I mean, I, I got nothing more to say here. Um, I hope this video turns out great. I really do. Uh, but this is a late upload, of course, this week I had, or this battle I had a week ago actually. So, uh, definitely to Ethan, you know, good game, really. Uh, I should have prepped better. I should have prepped. For you, honestly, uh, it did turn out to be a much closer game than I really was predicting it to be. So, with all that said, I was actually happy about the result, and uh, I think, you know, my guts did take my whole lot. But you know, having the wrong Stoutland going in and having wrong items on them uh, definitely didn't help. I wanted my Intimidate Stoutland to have a scarf to be able to have speed potential Cabotops. I knew he had faster Mons. Uh, I definitely knew that. But outside of that, you know, there was really nothing he could do. I thought he played those... He really, really wanted that last play to be his go-to play. Like, that was his only real good call. And it definitely did pay off. The Capital just came in and just finished up this game. And like I said, I think he wins fairly here. There is really nothing I can say to complain about it. Because I actually think he did a very nice game. Um, so yeah, with all that said guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this battle, I hope to upload one more battle and also a season finale or season halftime about the TBU, uh, hopefully next week. So yeah, you know, leave a like and all that stuff and I'll see you in the next video guys. And remember, the sky is limit and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye.